In this video, I will explain the model that I use when teaching the backhand ground stroke. I prefer beginners to learn a flatter backhand as I generally work with very young students who have trouble with the wrist action of the topspin backhand. This type of backhand is simple and repeatable, functional and scalable. I'll be using post-injury Juan Martín del Potro's backhand to provide an example of what I look for. My model for evaluating and teaching the backhand has six snapshots and five transitions. In the ready position, the knees are bent, the hips are hinged, and the back is straight, but angled forward into the court. The player is on the balls of their feet with their heels off the ground, ready to move. The player holds the racket with their top hand in their backhand grip or at the throat of the racket and their bottom hand in the forehand grip. The racket tip remains above the hands. The elbows and hands are out and away from the body. The feet are one and a half times shoulder width apart. From the ready position, the player rotates their torso to a chin on shoulder position, side on to the incoming ball. As the player rotates, they step forward with their dominant side foot. The back arm remains slightly bent and the front arm straightens. The player should use the top hand to rotate the racket so that their bottom hand is in the continental grip and their top hand is in the eastern forehand grip. In this snapshot, there should be a slight lean into the court where the front shoulder is lower than the back. From a front on view, both of the player's shoulders should be visible, indicating that they have coiled correctly. The front foot's toe should point at around a 45 degree angle to allow the body to rotate during the shot. The racket should remain on edge with the strings pointing to the side fence. The tip of the racket should point directly back and be in line with the front shoulder. The front arm should be relatively straight and stretched across the chest. The back elbow should be at chest height and away from the body. From the rearmost position, the player allows both hands to swing down and forward like a pendulum. As the hands drop, the body begins to rotate, the back arm straightens, and the butt cap of the racket lines up with the ball. At this point, the player's back arm should be relatively perpendicular to the ground and close to the hips. In this flatter backhand, the tip of the racket does not drop below the level of the hands, and the lowest position of the racket is slightly below the level of where contact will be. On waist height or lower balls, the back knee drops down and the back foot turns on its toe as the player's hips turn. On chest high balls, the front leg straightens and the back leg kicks up for balance. During the forward swing to contact, the body continues to rotate and the non-dominant arm remains straight. The hand path from the lowest position to contact is slightly diagonal. Contact is out in front with the non-dominant arm perpendicular to the body. The racket is horizontal at contact with the strings pointing at the target. The top hand wrist is extended to support this. If using a continental grip, the bottom hand's wrist should also be flexed slightly. Contact is between the knees and shoulders, ideally near hip height. During extension, the torso continues to turn to face the target. The non-dominant arm remains straight and also extends out to the target as the hands lift up and away from the body. The tip of the racket should also point to the target. The top wrist remains extended and the bottom wrist remains flexed. The dominant side arm stays bent slightly but is still away from the body. That is, the elbow should not fold in. At the forwardmost position, the hitting side strings now face toward the dominant side with the racket still on edge. The non-dominant wrist should be above the dominant one, causing the tip of the racket to be angled slightly upward.
After the racket reaches its forwardmost position, the non-dominant arm remains straight for as long as possible, then wraps around the neck like a scarf. The player should not bend at the non-dominant elbow until the racket is well across the body to avoid changing the racket face early, thus scooping the ball sideways. The player should finish with their dominant elbow pointing to the dominant side and their non-dominant elbow pointing to the target. The racket should point from the dominant side shoulder to the non-dominant side hip.